Welcome to the Jazz Gallery. My name is Sacho Vasandani. Thank you, everybody, for joining us online. We're thrilled to be sharing some music. I, I can't tell you how much it means to be me to be sharing some music with you here on this stage with these people joining me. On the piano, Taylor Eichstee. On the bass, Ben Williams. On the drums, Kendrick Scott. Saxophone, Dana Stevens. We're going to continue now with something from Cole Porter. This is called I Love Paris. Every time I look down on this timeless town, whether blue or gray be her skies, whether loud be her tears, or whether soft be her tears, more and more do I. Thank you. 
because my love is here because my love is here get to talking oh yeah of course um, no, nice nice to hear you play <laughs> so um, this is a little I probably should have put some some of my microphone into the speakers because yeah, we, we can hear yours ah, I'm not gonna worry about it okay. they can hear me so um, that was beautiful man Thank you. Um, the last time we had you here was like in December I think like a year ago Wow um, you played here with Vijay and, and Mike. Yes, Mike Moreno yeah. and, and Vijay. Yeah, that, that was also a great show. So it's it's nice to have you back. Thank you. And I'm missing your quarantine beard a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sa Sasha was growing a really nice quarantine beard for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so we got a, a couple questions from a couple people, and uh, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, and maybe a sixth question that I don't really understand, but you might n help me decipher it. Maybe. Okay. Uh, so your fir the first question is, what is your personal approach to treading the line between the old and new schools of Ooh, music, I guess? Nice, nice question. Um, you know, I don't have an answer to that because it's kind of ongoing. Uh, at a given moment, it's um, thinking about honoring a lyric. And in another moment, it's, it's about enjoying the music and the musicians that are you're making music with. Uh, I guess it's, I guess it's really trying to get the brain out of it. If the lyric is leading me somewhere, great. If the music or the energy or the beat is leading me somewhere, great. But I've been tr trying to get my brain out of it and just kind of follow what's here, you know? And I think, I, I, you know, I, either way, even if I have a good day or, or a bad day, I need to go back and keep on working. So I think uh, the short answer is uh, follow your heart. Beautiful. Um, let's see, if you, if you could collaborate with a musician or a group outside of the jazz ec ecosystem, who would you choose? Oh, that's great. That's a great question. And I, I feel fortunate enough to, to be able to, I think now in 2020, and especially in this time when we're sitting between sets talking about the, the electronic gear that we're buying to... <laughs> To make our like mixer mixing and, and yeah, I, I should just quickly mention. So between sets, Dana was on his computer and he was just showing us all his like synth software that he has and it's um, making some really cool sounds. And that's kind of like what we spent the whole time talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> and and honestly, honestly, I think I think we were talking about this too. It's like this wouldn't have been possible ten years ago. And when I came out uh, with my first record uh, in before to like two thousand seven. This was kind of a really big question, like, hey, what are you doing outside of jazz and inside? But now I, I don't know any musician inside of jazz or outside of jazz who isn't like saying, hey, what's, what's that? Let me go tinker or collaborate or somewhere in between, you know? So I, I don't have one person. I, I'm really still just feeling this. And this is kind of where I come from, which is swing. And, and I, I'm always down to journey to anywhere else. And, and I, I will, but um, but with this kind of fuel, always kind of guiding the journey. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. <laughs> so the other question, someone wants to know who Mr. Oglevy is and what's the story behind the song? Yeah, that's a song I, I wrote. Wow, I, don't, I got something on my jeans. I hope you guys... <laughs> <laughs> it looks kind of silly, disgusting. Um, I wrote that song when I came to New York because I came wanting to sing music and jazz specifically and um, I was living uptown and I was realizing that there was a whole bigger system, a, a way that industry works that is bigger than any one artist. And it, it, it is that way, but imagine just being focused on going to New York, your own personal journey, your own personal thing. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna make music, I'm gonna get to play with my heroes. 
And then you just realize that the world is so much bigger than your own dreams. Not to say that your dreams don't matter, because I like to think they do. But when you get to New York, you kind of realize there's so much, there's so much else going on. What you do, what you dream about, what you live and even die for, sometimes it doesn't feel like it matters. So I don't know if it was a response to that, but that was the song. Got you. Uh, let's see. What songs have you rediscovered since the lockdown? Ooh, yeah. Shaka Khan. <laughs> Every everything Shaka Khan and Rufus has been has been on the playlist. Um, I I have been I have also been rediscovering. Uh, I've been discovering some '80s Wayne that I wasn't wasn't hip to at all with like Terry Lynn Carrington and Rainy Rosas stuff that. I really didn't know about it all. But also, actually, stuff by Wayne that I did know and that I love, um, a couple versions of Angola. Mm -hmm. There's a 2003 disc that he does um, uh, some really nice arrangements of. And then if you go back and listen to like the original Adam's Apple, uh, it's a completely different song almost. Yeah. So enjoying that kind of <laughs> that thing. And then, you know, lately a lot of Bill Charlap too, mm -hmm. because um, there's just so much inside the voicings that, that gives me a lot of f kind of food for, for thought. Yeah, got you. Uh, let's see, has this entire group played together before? And I just added myself, could you briefly tell us maybe about the first time you played with each of these musicians? I would love to. That, yeah. would, be, that would be a nice walk <laughs> down memory lane. We only get to go down memory lane so, so often. So um, I'm gonna try to recall uh, my I don't, I don't, I don't have a great memory, but um, I, I know that that um, we were talking about this. I'll, I'll say the things in, in conjunction with the gallery. Ben, I had a, a, an opportunity because of Rio and the gallery to do a commission where I wrote a whole hour's worth of music, and it was a challenge for me. And I wanted some some interesting musicians to play it that could bring it to life. It was a, it was something I, I hadn't done before or really since. And Ben Williams played bass on that, and um, that was an awesome experience. I think that might have been the first time we did something at least sizable together. Um, Kendrick, I don't remember the first time we played together, but there was we've been on a lot of projects like together for like Camila's record is yeah. one of the people's, but also for for my things, um, a couple records together and a couple tours. So grateful to. Have have played with him for a number of years. Um, Dana, same thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of collaborations on, on my record and plenty of shows together. I remember we were in uh, somewhere in the Bay Area, and some of Dana's family came to the gig. It was at college. <laughs> that that sticks out in in my mind as a, as a really cool gig. Like I don't know, someone from your family came to the to the <laughs> gig, and I I remember thinking that was so nice that family came out. Yeah. I have a supportive family too, and it's really nice to to get folks um, in the in the audience. Mm -hmm. And then Taylor, I, I knew Taylor for longer than we were playing together because um, I knew him kind of through Gretchen. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess for I don't know, it seems like forever. Certainly around the time Slow Mo Motion Miracles came out, and then like kind of everything since, from big band to whatever the other stuff I do is. Um, I don't know, it's really nice to play with these guys because there's history there, but even if there was no history there, you can kind of tell that it's just it's just there. <laughs> yeah, the person so that nice. asked this question, I'll add it at the end, that if you guys haven't played together before in conjunction, you should make a habit of it. Yeah, happy to. <laughs> happy to. So um, the last question, well, two more questions, but this is one that is three parts and... I didn't sort of understand it, but do you know a Laura Montes, maybe? Yeah. Because may, maybe there's some inside context okay, here. So the, yeah. question, the first question is, your wife says, quoting, are we going to sleep yet? <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Are we, are we <laughs> well, we're not. Well, not yet. <laughs> so the second question was, uh, Leah says, also quote, quoting, walkies, please. Okay, yeah, <laughs> there, there we go. This is inside baseball. Okay, there you go. And then the last one is, you are awesome, muchacho. Thank you. Well, <laughs> yeah. thanks. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. So I, just, I was just curious if there was some inside stuff there. I don't know. No, nah, nothing. Well, nothing, and then nothing my, too <laughs> my last question is, um, 
what are you working on and if there's anything you would like to plug yeah um, um, I, I have a couple little projects in, in the works and the uh, the next thing is a duo project with Roman Colin mm -hmm. uh, we we were sitting together in the park a couple months ago and I said I'm I haven't been playing with anybody and he had been playing and he said well I know the studio um, down the street and it it kind of went from a session into a record and so I'm really happy that Audition Records is putting so, so it So you out. guys already recorded it? So we just recorded oh, cool. over a day and, and then um, he had to can't master it and, and now Audition Records is putting it out. So I'm cool, it's, I'm happy with it. When this. is this coming out? March, it's a, March. It's a duo record, just songs. March, yeah. uh, whichever camera is, is on right now. Um, yeah. I mean, who would have thought, like, I, I was just, you know, and this is one of the handful of times that I've played music live with folks and so I think with all the musicians, it's just like, it's been a minute, you know? And so of I course, had that conversation, yeah. and, and to have it be able to so organically and quickly turn it into a record, it's a godsend. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Well, um, that's that. Thank you, Sashal. Thank you. Appreciate it. To you guys also for playing and sounding beautiful as well. Um, again, if you guys would like to support the Jazz Gallery, you can become a member, or if you have already done that or can't, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you're on right now. Um, as I mentioned, we're trying to monetize the channel, and it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, but it actually helps us financially. So um, if you can do that, and if you can find friends to do that, that's awesome. Um, otherwise, you can go check out Sachel on his social media uh, channels. You have an Instagram and all that stuff that people can follow you, right? Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> you don't want to be on my social like that. It's, it's yeah. Sachel Sings for everything, if you're, if you're still around. Yeah. But Jazz Gallery, Jazz Gallery dot org is, is the way to be. Awesome. Well, thank you guys, and we will see you uh, on Saturday or on Monday or on Thursday. Um, check out our website, jazzgallery.org, for all of our upcoming events, and have a great one. Thanks, Edward. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. <laughs>